As we try to reach greater speeds and capacities in the data center cabling designs, what are the pros and cons of single mode fiber versus multi mode fiber? Here to tell us more is Patrick Van Vickel. He's Senior Manager of Product Design and Engineering at Sumitomo Electric Lightwave. And Patrick, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Uh, of course, we're talking today about the pros and cons of single mode fiber versus multi mode fiber. Just earlier at TIA's uh, data center workshop, there were a number of participants that were talking about those pros and cons, when to use it and when not to. What do you say? Yeah, it was a great workshop, and, and basically what it boils down to is there, there are three factors when looking at the fiber type for what part of the data center you're in. Um, and of course, the, it was reiterated today that the main one is always going to come down to transceiver cost. That's, that's a huge player in this, and the multi-mode Vixels have always offered a better cost than what the single mode options have been. But also link distances come into play, and um, finally the cabling design in terms of the, the physical size, cable management, and um, seems like a smaller issue until you take into account the fact that that it heavily influences or can your cooling. And of course, cooling efficiency and power usage for that is a huge driver in, da in, the, in the efficiencies of data centers. So those three factors basically have to be reconfigured for what portion of the data center you're looking at and trying to figure out which one makes the most sense for uh, multi-mode or single mode in each case. And um, I've watched this um, occur for moving from 10G to 40G to 100G to 400G is currently being discussed. And in each case, it's interesting to see how it moves back and forth, but for what Typically is uh, being used right now in the kind of server interconnect space in the data center, multi-mode still seems to come out the winner. Um, especially when you look at most of the link distances in the data center, statistically, are, um, depending on which statistic you use, between 80 to 90 percent of those are less than 100 meters. And over half of them are less than 50 meters. So it's still well within the reach of a typical multi-mode fiber, and once that's accommodated, um, the transceiver cost, of course, just dominates. Now, of course, is also, and you mentioned cost, it's also a cost issue whereby single mode fiber would be cost prohibitive for a lot of, a lot of folks out there, uh, whereas uh, multi-mode fiber would be much, or far less expensive. I think the statistic was uh, up to 40 to 60 percent less expensive. Is that right? Yeah, it depends on whether you're talking about the, the raw fiber or cable part of that or the overall system part. Um, actually, multi-mode cable, if you look at just that one component, is actually slightly more expensive than the single-mode counterpart. But when you roll that into the overall system, it really swings back in the other direction, again, driven by that transceiver cost. So um, we have to kind of keep that whole thing in mind when, when looking at each individual part. Now, when you move out to the further out into the data center, and especially when you move into very large data centers, the, the hyperscale or modular, you have to switch to, to single mode in those instances, be, simply because of the reach, but also possibly because of the bandwidth. In those particular environments, the, you're not as transceiver rich, and that, that equation about the overall cost of the system swings back, not only because of link distances, but sometimes just because of economics in the single mode area. So both of those fiber types coexist, but it, you have to re, uh, look at those three factors in that equation, depending on where you are in the data center, to make your decision. So Patrick, there's no issue around compatibility as far as SMF and MMF. If you want to use MM MMF, inside but for the longer distances and the further reach you would use single mode fiber there's no compatibility issue there. no no it's uh, it's being done now um, it's it's common and um, you know it's about using basically the right tool for the right job and it that's that's something that you know should be encouraged it's the most efficient solution for that area now I know Sumitomo electric white wave um, looks at data center architectures as a continuum rather than a clear-cut view from end of row or top of rack what does yeah. that mean Patrick well I think that if you look at a, a traditional top of rack solution, a lot of the, the, the solutions recently are built around that, and kind of um, people kind of view as some of the older solutions, um, they being like an end of row and moving from one to the other, um, um, some legacy work there. But really, I think that sometimes it's not so much that the architecture is out of date, but some of the very interesting designs that are being discussed now, some of them revolving around software-defined networks actually challenge the fundamental definitions of those. And so instead of clearly defining it in one of those two kind of categories, um, some of these things are incredibly fiber rich and have, and you know, cross connects to every particular part of the network to the point where it's hard to define it as one or the other. So it seems like as soon as a particular technology, multi-mode's been counted out a number of times in the past as being the, the fiber to continue to be used in a data center. And that's borne out not to be true because of advancements there. And I think a similar thing can be said about any particular architecture. There's just too much going on right now. And there's too much difference between what the larger 
um, hyperscale and, and very large data center pro providers are doing versus what an enterprise solution would be. So there's kind of going to be a home for a lot of those different solutions based on that as well. Patrick, of as a top of rack cabling designs may be less cost prohibitive, but as, we, as our speeds move towards 400G at some point, uh, does that change the business case for Sumitomo Electric Light Lightwave? Uh, it doesn't change the business case so much as that we have to be um, very cognizant of both what's going on in the standards communities, but also what the customers are asking for. And just recently, and what's being working through right now in the IEEE, um, is the 400 gig standard based on essentially a 16 fiber solution. And that's using existing or coming about 25 gig um, uh, lane rates. Well, uh, that brings you to a 32 fiber cable at bare minimum to maintain a 400 gig link. And when you're talking about much less fiber for a single mode solution, you kind of wonder about that. But here, just recently at TR42 within TIA, the standards work, um, a couple of different people presented work showing fiber, multi-mode fiber, that's capable of holding four wave, or hold, or, uh, transmitting four wavelengths over a wave uh, spectrum of wavelengths that, that the bandwidth can be supported for that up to close to ohm four bandwidths and, and maybe um, higher depending on how it's defined. And then at the same time, in the same meeting, um, the laser manufacturers, the Vixel manufacturers coming in and saying, we've already got Vixels that can do two wavelengths and four is something that you know, we can work on. When you look at that and combine, now all of a sudden you've swung back from this 1632 fiber um, solution for multi-mode that was pretty, pretty big compared to what single mode can do. Now we're back again to at parity on the net number of fibers, the size of the cable, and we're back looking at that, that same thing about transceiver cost. So we have to monitor that, the, the dynamics of that situation, and make sure that what we're doing in terms of cable design, hardware design, and um, you know, we have new ribbon designs that are made for those sorts of use that can be collapsed. And it's a pliable ribbon that can be rolled up but still laid planar for use in a, um, in a, in a connector. So we have to keep an eye on all those things and keep, make sure that what we're working on is the right thing for that. Patrick, and you mentioned this in, uh, during the, uh, the uh, workshop earlier about the exciting things that are, being, are, are, that are happening right now in TIA's TR42 mm -hmm. uh, Engineering Committee. You talked about a wide multi-mode fiber. Mm -hmm. is that, was that one of the products that you're working on? Or it one is. of the standards? It is, and it's, it's, it's been interesting to watch a lot of the, uh, the research and development that's then presented in that, in that committee. And that's by far um, one of the most exciting things that's coming out of that right now. And that I think that you know these the uh, the engineers and uh, the development teams that come to TR42 and present this this information and show the results, um, a lot of that you know spreads throughout the international community and winds up in IEC and ISO IEC and that sort of thing. And I'm sure that's going to happen here. And that's just getting started. And so I think the initial implementation of the 400G at IEEE is not going to be using that technology. Just like when um, 40 gig or 100 gig was introduced, it was not using 25 gig lane rates. So it's, it's going to be a very kind of similar situation. But it won't be long before that type of fiber, once the work is done in 42, kind of works its way up into the ecosystem. And the system specs like IEEE begin to take advantage of it. So it's a very exciting time to be a part of that committee. Now, by the way, just for our viewers, again, that are, that are maybe be a bit hazy on what wide multi-mode fiber is, is that to allow further reach or is it to allow fewer fibers in the cable? Yeah, it's actually focused on um, fewer fibers, and one of the reasons for that is that the, uh, the statistics I stated on reach, um, we still need to make sure that we have sufficient reach, but uh, the focus on the wideband multi-mode, I think, none of that's been specifically defined, but the reach that I've kind of being talked about is still well within the range of what your typical reach would be. So then you're just focusing on, now I want to reduce the number of fibers. So instead of having 16 fibers per lane, where each fiber is only transmitting one wavelength of light, if I can put four wavelengths on a single fiber, now I can divide that total by four. And I'm back to, to having a much smaller cable and, and less fiber in the system. So it's much, it's much focused on getting the cable size down and just being more efficient for that. Patrick, just to finish up, uh, we talked a lot about the fiber types, but do you want to add anything about cable types? Yeah, so um, I think that I mentioned the, uh, the, the pliable rollable ribbon that it, it allows a ribbon to be collapsed. And so I think when we look at the overall solution, the single mode versus multi-mode debate in, in the fiber type is only part of the equation. It's only part of the story. So in some systems, um, we see that um, as a cable designer, which is what I started doing and branched out in, into in hardware designs, we see desire for fiber designs like our airblown fiber cabling, which allows people to put in single mode in a, like a more campus environment, being used for these backbone types of, of environments for like hyperscale data centers. That's something that um, is an interesting application and is a part of an overall flexibility in the design that we're trying to do. 
and by maintaining that solution and then the same customer in a different application may need an outside plant cable that's incredibly high fiber count that is for something very similar but in, in a little bit different application and we have to have maintain that flexibility to keep an eye on that. So for cable designs we see everything from air blown fiber designs that have relatively low fiber count to fiber counts that we would only have seen in the outside plant for like long haul telecom type things and trunking in the past is now being commonly applied to data center applications. And then even down to the very um, fiber level or the uh, small cord level, these very small ribbons that you can now make a round cord with and still connectorize into an MPO for one of these applications. So we are constantly kind of um, reevaluating that and making sure we're working on the right things. I know you're working a lot towards uh, 100G and then of course there was a lot of discussion in the room or some discussion in the room about 400G as well. It would be exciting to see what you guys come up with to support uh, that type of speed and capacity. So thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.